Welcome to video number three in our exclusive series on how to begin mastering in ozone. We're joined by mastering engineer Jonathan Weiner, and we're going to be talking about basic compression techniques using ozone. So now I'm going to get into um, sort of thinking a little bit more about what I might want to do to finesse this track, to change the sound. And uh, let me play a little bit for you. Uh, I'm going to jump between a quieter section and a louder section. Um, and what I am interested in sort of putting on display for you is the fact that the level probably is a little bit too, um, the level jump between the quieter section and the loud section is a little bigger than what I want it to be. So I'm going to think about maybe adding a little bit of uh, compression to try to reconcile that difference. The other thing I want you to listen for is in the loudest section, there's something a little bit edgy and thin or overly bright about the vocal. All right, so first, back and forth between quieter and louder. And now the louder section. All right, so the other added benefit of the compression is that it's going to get the drums to sit back just a little bit in the mix so that the vocal uh, feels like it's really taking front and center. Um, all right, so let's start with the compression. So I'll turn on the dynamic section. Uh, I'm going to aim in the loudest section for something in the order of one, one and a half, maybe two dB of compression. Um, start with a relatively long attack time and a moderate release time in, in a mastering context. A long attack might be, or a medium attack might be somewhere around 30 milliseconds, and a release time somewhere in the neighborhood of 200, and a ratio of 2 to 1, and then I'll adjust the compressor threshold to get approximately the amount of gain reduction that I want. All right, so there you can see on the gain reduction meter that we were getting about the amount of gain reduction that I had talked about earlier. I'm going to turn on my ear, my level matched AB tool, and just give this a before and after listen to make sure that the compression isn't doing something I don't want it to be doing. I'm going to back off the compression ratio just a touch in the threshold, but that's pretty good. It's adding what a, we sometimes like to call glue, um, where it's getting the, the drums to sit back a little bit in the track, and so you can hear the harmony, you can hear the melody just a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed this installment of our series on how to begin mastering in ozone. Our thanks to Jonathan Weiner for joining us and for putting on the demonstration for us. If you have questions on ozone or any other isotope products, give your Sweetwater sales engineer a call or visit Sweetwater.com. I'm Mitch Gallagher.